that can can? What's up? What's going on, girl? How you doing? <laughs> I'm up here live on YouTube and live on uh, Instagram at the same time. <laughs> How you been, Candace? Girl, what you think about R. Kelly getting out of jail? Hi, Jewel King. I'm on Facebook. I mean, I'm on Face, not Facebook. I'm on Instagram, and I'm on YouTube. I'm talking to everybody tonight. Everybody. Good evening, Jules. Man, R. Kelly then got out of jail, y'all. Who the heck done bought it R. Kelly out of jail, y'all? I'm like, okay, hold up, wait a minute. Um, wasn't he broke? Like, he was just, like, broke. Like, broke, five broke. Like, broke. <laughs> That's like us being broke Monday. And then... Tuesday, we come across $50,000. Like, where does money come from? <laughs> you said you're trying to play catch up, Candace. <laughs> I welcome everybody, everybody who's coming in on YouTube, everybody who's coming in on Instagram. Welcome to the chat tonight, Tanya's Primetime TV. Those of y'all on Instagram, my YouTube channel is, I have uh, two, um, that are Tanya's live primetime TV slash media reviews. And then I also have Tanya's primetime TV slash media reviews. So the same name except for one of them has live after the word Tanya's. So I have two channels. Sometimes I upload different stuff on each channel. Um, and then, of course, I have my cake decorating channel called Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice on YouTube. Um... So make sure y'all check out all three of my channels, Tanya's Live, Primetime TV slash Media Reviews, and Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews, and Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice. Thank you very much. So y'all can check out my good old desserts because your girl be in that kitchen whipping it, whipping it. Nah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Candace, you said dude didn't have no money. No money. And I guess the lady friend of his, um, who brought the money to the, uh, to get him out, um, she had, like, she brought 100K. She brought 100K up in there. And she claims, you know, this is a friend of mine. Um, I guess she's looking out for her boy, looking out for her dude. You know, I don't know if it's just a friendship or whatnot, you know, we don't know, <laughs> but, uh, I was like, okay, he ain't got no money for bond. He don't have no money to pay the back child support and he had to pay the child support and he had to pay the bond, you know, to get out of jail. Like what you say, Julie said when R. Kelly got out from jail, he said, take him. Yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> He said, take me to McDonald's. And you know why he said, take me to McDonald's? Who be at McDonald's? Who was he trying to get at, at McDonald's when he used to go to McDonald's all the time? <laughs> That's where he met a lot of the young girls was at McDonald's. Like, come on now. <laughs> was he trying to throw that back up in our face? Like, did y'all did y'all get that feeling? Like, okay, he could have went anywhere. He could have went to a state. I mean, dude, you just been sitting down in a dirty jail cell, probably cold, eating some slop, everybody talking mess about you, teasing you, accusing you of, you know, raping and molesting and all that kind of stuff to little girls. And the first place you want to go is to get a Big Mac French fry, lay of fish, quarter pound of French fry, icicle, French steak, sundae, and apple pie. <laughs> Now, I know I said that wrong, but y'all know. Y'all get my drift. I used to work at McDonald's years ago, so um, 
I used to know that by heart. But um, and I used to be birdie every year. We had a parade downtown. Ken, I don't know if you remember that parade we used to have downtown every year when I used to work at uh McD in high school, and I had that huge a hundred pound uh uh costume with birdie y'all remember birdie the bird with the big old head and she had the big old ponytails oh, man the head was like this big by itself and i used to wear that every summer <laughs> when i used to work at mcdonald's but um i'm like it was yeah like was that a subliminal you think that was a subliminal message candid so do i I really think that was a subliminal, like, okay, y'all thought me had me, y'all thought y'all had me, y'all thought I wasn't gonna get out, um, we know from the documentaries and from the books that's been coming out, all the witnesses, all the accusers, that one of the places he used to frequent was McDonald's, to holler at the youth, at the, you know, the young sisters, the young girls, (laughs) <laughs> girl that you talking about cute that costume was a hot mess when i say whoo we when it was hot and they used to tell us do not take your costumes off do not take your costume off you don't want the kids to realize you're not really uh you know birdie and um who else was it uh birdie and the fry guy and the mcburglar and ronald mcdonald i mean it was all of us it was all of us Come on now, these kids know we ain't really the real McDonald characters. Who <laughs> be up in there about to die? But <laughs> but man, he went to McDonald's, not Red Lobsters, not Sizzlers, not um a st- a nice you know cuisine steakhouse, um not five star, nothing like that. He went to McD's. He went to McDonald's when he first got out. I'm like, if that's not a subliminal message, like throwing it up in our face, like he knew what he was doing. A lot of people might not have recognized that, but he knew what he was doing. And I was just like, okay, I see you. I see you, fool. I I see you. But, you know, a lot of people, um, I titled this live, a lot of people, you know, are still, you know, um... Some people is on the fence. Some people really think he did it. And some people is like, oh, the man, he ain't did it. What about the mama? What about the mama? You know, they came to him, you know. Um, not all of them came to him. I don't know where they keep getting that misconstrued because not all of them came to him. He sought out young women. He had, you know, people seeking out young women, hitting them up on social media, hitting them up at McDonald's, hitting them up in the concerts, bringing them backstage, um, so all of them, all of them people that made accusations over the year did not seek him. A, a lot of the times he sought them out and I mean, come on, it, it, a movie star. They probably was like starstruck, you know, oh my God, R. Kelly, he wants to see me. Oh my God, he can make me a star. Oh my God. And then they're young, like 13, 14, 15, 16, young, gullible, naive. I mean... They ain't got that grown brain yet. They ain't got that grown brain yet to see through the BS. You know, like some of us in our 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. Some of us. Some of us. <laughs> you said a real nigga did. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, I ain't never been to jail before. Let me knock on wood. I ain't never been to jail before. But, okay. Maybe if I was. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe if I was in jail or prison for, like, years, for, like, years, and just been craving some McDonald's french fries, you know, something like that, you know, but come on now, as soon, as soon as he, and he made sure, uh, everybody knew he was there, he made a big old appearance and all that kind of stuff, made sure he stood out, they didn't drive through the drive through secretly, he didn't have nobody go pick it up for him, he went there and made sure that everybody saw that he was at Mickey D's. You said exactly, they just want some kicks and a girl, and a girl. <laughs> hey y'all, for y'all who just coming in, I'm on Instagram and uh, uh, YouTube, so if I y'all hear me reading off comments that y'all don't see on YouTube, I'm looking at them on Instagram. But you said exactly they just want some kicks and a burger, <laughs> a.k.a. 
some girls with some shake. <laughs> Man, I'm just tripping because, okay, he didn't have no money. No money. He couldn't pay his rent. They said he was having troubles paying rent. He was having troubles paying child support, which he ain't paid in years. So I don't think he was having trouble paying child support. I just think he ain't tried to pay child support. You know, it, having trouble paying child support is you pay a little bit here, you might miss a month, you pay a little bit there, you might miss a month, you pay a little bit there. No. <laughs> Once Drea left him, he wasn't trying to pay her nothing. He wasn't trying to pay her dust. You said that's because he was paying everybody off. Thank you. Thank you. And that's what that's the first thing that crossed my mind when I'm thinking R. Kelly, like R. Kelly, like the man that had over dozens of albums. And I mean, he didn't he didn't song on different people's uh songs and rap songs and I mean he man wrote music for people and he's broke five broke broke five broke now i didn't think he was actually broke um uh, when we found out he wasn't paying drea any child support i just assumed he was angry he was bitter and he didn't want to pay her any child support um, they say what he's worth, but I don't think he has any liquid assets. Is that how you say it? I'm not no, um, finance major or, you know, anything like that. So, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Y'all who, you know, know that department really well with uh, accounting and all that. But, uh, um, I'm just like, he, he don't have this, he don't have this money available to put out obviously but see that's where i was a little bit confused as well because um you said come on now that's dropping those six figures off to the family thank you thank you thank you thank you i don't know how much money this man was paying to them families but you best believe like i said um who was that i was talking to on one of my lives uh maybe a week or so ago and I had told somebody if I was okay, because there's been allegations that he, even from his brother, that he, uh, sexually, um, he had sex with one of his cousins who was like 12 or something like that, you know, and she had a baby, which is his baby. That's what they're alleging. And I guess he never went to jail for it or anything like that. I don't know if he still gets to come to Christmas dinners or Thanksgiving dinners or, you know, the reunions or whatnot. I don't know if this baby knows that that's, you know, possibly my baby, my daddy. Um, but I'm like this. Okay, first of all, I'm one of those mamas who we going all the way with it. If anything ever happens like that with my child, especially if it's a family member, we going all the way with it. But obviously from what his brother and other people are alleging, um, her mother and father didn't. So, I have said, well, I guess if I were them and they're not going to press charges, he's going to pay. That's if I were them because they're not, you know, uh, taking any legal actions. Me personally, uh, we going all the way if that was my child, you know, <laughs> if that was my child. But, uh, yeah, his brother called him, one of his brothers called him the devil because they know him. They grew up with him. They hung with him. They got to see a side of him that we never saw, you know, before all this stuff came out, um, that, that we never saw. And, and a lot of people is like, was thinking like his brother, he just trying to get some, uh, five minutes of fame or get some publicity, you know, by coming out and everything like that. Um, I think what it was, was a lot of people's conscience is probably tearing them up. That's what I think it is. And I think a lot of these people who are coming forward might possibly even realize, okay, since we came forward to stop him, we still might face some consequences. But I think they obviously must be okay with that because they it, it's been eating at their conscience. I mean, it had to be. 
It had to be. These people have been trying and trying and trying and trying to stop him. And a lot of people is like, why are they coming out now? Why are the documentary now? These allegations been ongoing since Aaliyah. I mean, it's not like people just jumped up one day and said, oh, he touched me. <laughs> These allegations been going on for a long time and nobody either paid attention or they didn't believe it. Or they're like, okay, you know, his money so long and everybody on his payroll, they wasn't trying to do anything about it. You said, um, you said have to. Did you see where that one brother called? Oh, okay, I read that comment. But, I mean, seriously. And then, Drea, you know what? The first thing I thought of when I found out <laughs> that somebody dropped that bond for him. <laughs> I'm like, you know that uh, when they win the Super Bowl and they be like, we're going to Disney World. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of when they was like, you know what, he done got out, you know, because, you know, he had to pay the child support and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, uh, I'm like, she probably, oh my God, if somebody who owed me child support, and all the kids is older, you know, the, the, the kids is older, but if somebody had to drop some stacks on me at one time in child support, even if my kids go, I'd be like, hey. How much is your college loan again? You about to be, if you got any debt, kids, debt free, college pay, all that, all that in the third. So, but it's, it's sad that it takes you being brought up on 10 counts of <laughs> aggravated sexual abuse for your child support to get paid. That's really, really sad. That's like really, really sad. He probably would never, would never pay that child support or either the court have to, you know, drag him down to the courthouse <laughs> over and over again to try to get that money out of him. But you got to be brought to jail, brought up on all these charges for you to pay your child support. That is so sad. That is, I, uh, that just make, that just, uh, that disgusts me. It really does disgust me that you can spend all your money on paying off victims, allegedly, and their parents, allegedly, even though we've been hearing about this for years, but, and you can wine and dine, and you can allegedly buy them plane tickets and put them up in hotels and be, these people is traveling back and forth, back and forth to see you. But you can't pay your child support. Ain't that sad, y'all? That's like really messed up. That's like really jacked. That's jacked up. I mean, you see where his priorities are. You see where his priorities are. But then again, I don't know. If I was Dred, I wouldn't even want my children around him. I I, I wouldn't even want. Mm -mm. Now, I know all predators who mess with young children don't or might not mess with their own, but your cousin, I'd have to give you the side eye on that. Hmm. Y'all know I'll be killing them side eyes. <laughs> yes, it's sick and insane. You exactly right, Candace. It's very sick and very insane. And... If you mess with your cousin and you a grown man, I mean, I know your your daughter, your children are much closer to you than your cousins, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I wouldn't trust it. I wouldn't trust it. Mm -mm. We got to have uh, supervised, appointed visitations, like real spit. Supervised appointed visitations, real spit. You say yes, I didn't. Yeah. Girl, yes, yes. His um, his brother has said that on several interviews that he had been on several interviews, and the only reason why the brother didn't give up the cousin's name is because first of all, it happened when she was like twelve or thirteen, so you know. You know how it is about that age and putting their names out there and stuff. And on top of that, he said when she's ready, she will give her testimony. 
he was like, that's not my testimony to spill. But when she's ready, she will give her testimony and she will, you know, and I'm sure it's going to, I'm sure it's going to happen. I'm, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. I don't know. I'm thinking like this. If this happened, if this really happened, um, and the child was around 12 or 13, the child that she had would be grown now. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe she probably didn't come out either because of the child's sake. Like, imagine growing up and you're the child of a predator and you, your mama and your daddy is all over the news and you going to school. Oh, your daddy is your cousin. Your daddy is, your, you know, you know what I mean? So I, I'm sure one day the cousin, if this is true, she'll, she'll eventually come out. And I don't know. I'll be, I'll be, wait, I'll be here for it. I'll be here for it. You know, I'm I breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, um, I sure will. But uh, besides that, I'm like, you said bald headed. <laughs> Lord, I mean, I, and he's still claiming innocent. Now, I know everybody is entitled, you know, to a defense. Everybody is innocent until proven guilty. Um, everybody's entitled to the presumption of innocence. Um, but with all this new um, evidence coming forward, like, much more evidence than what was provided, you know, back in 08. You know, back when he got off, you know, but I'm like, wow. Now, some of the allegations, um, like I have said on my other live the other day, some of the allegations uh, is for detail. Okay. These are the details. Just in case anybody has been sleeping under a rock, these are the details of the allegations against R. Kelly. Um, it's four detailed documents. Four accusers, three of them underage, three of them were minors. Um, the charges go back, or the allegations go back as far as 1998, and they span more than a decade. One of the girls who attended, one of the girls attended R. Kelly's, um, hold on one second. One of the girls who attended uh, R. Kelly's child, um, remember when he went to jail in 08? Okay, remember he got off. Uh, she attended his trial every day, almost every day, I believe. He later invited her to his home in Chicago suburb of Olympia, uh, where they had um, had intercourse multiple times, starting from starting from May, when she was sixteen, according to the documents, which which said he also slapped, choked, spit, you know, and other things to the girl. She was underage. She was a minor. In 1998, another girl reportedly um, met Kelly at a restaurant where she was having a 16th birthday party. Um, his manager gave her the uh, Kelly's, R. Kelly's manager gave her R. Kelly's business card and suggested that she call Kells. The girl's mother heard the exchange took the card and told the manager, my daughter is only 16 years old. But, but, the daughter later retrieved the card from her mother's purse, contacted R. Kelly, who told her to take a cab to his studio where they had intercourse periodically for a year. After the first encounter, she was given an envelope of cash. Hmm. Hmm. That's why he broke now. Um, in early 2003, a Chicago hairdresser told prosecutors that she thought she was going to braid R. Kelly's hair, but he pulled his pants down and instead tried to force her to give him oral. The woman, who was 24, was able to pull away, but Kelly ended up um, getting off on her all over her face, spit in her face, all kind of basically dehumanize her, you know, probably embarrass her. I mean, uh, that, that, mm, 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 mm. Okay. 
his his DNA was found in semen on one of the accuser's shirts. And semen found on a shirt worn by another was submitted for DNA testing. Um, this is uh, per the Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox. Um, but it said it was not clear when, actually when, the accusers turned the shirts over to authorities. Hmm. This is a lot of allegations. This is a lot of allegations. Three of them under the age, three of them 16 and younger, uh, or 16, you know, because most, uh, most places the age of consent is like 17. Uh, some places the age of consent is like 16, some places. But, uh, so anyway, it was three of them under age. And then it was one where he basically, um, humiliated her, ejaculated on her spit on her, you know, all this, he did all kind of stuff because she didn't want to have sex with him. Huh. Now, each of the new charges carries up to seven years in prison, making it possible for him to receive up to 70 years. Up to 70 years. That's the maximum, y'all. But, but, Probation is also an option. And I just looking at what we do know now and looking at what he faced in the past and looking up how he looking at how he um got over uh the stuff that he faced in the past. Yes, nasty black. Mm -hmm. Yes, Candace. Mm. Um I can't imagine him receiving probation for all this. I can't imagine receiving probation for all this. Um, I really think he's going to serve some time. I really do. I really do. Y'all let me know what y'all think. If y'all think he's going to um, serve some time. Uh, again, you know, with that documentary that came out a little while ago, a lot of people was like, you know, after the documentary came out and some time had passed, I guess most people was like, oh, he going to jail now, he going to jail now, you know, because the documentary had came out. And, you know, a lot of people were, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of people were really emotional over the documentary and basically, you know, believe in most of what they were saying. Um, yeah, right, they better not get him probation. I, girl, mm -mm, they about to have a riot up in them streets. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, some people was, like, giving up on the documentary, like, okay, the documentary that came and gone, R. Kelly still walking around, talking about, you know, it's too late, they should have done that 30 years ago, you know, my music is embedded in everybody's souls and all this kind of stuff, basically being arrogant and cocky, like, what now? What else y'all got? You know, what else y'all got? What else y'all gonna do to try to bring me down? But, lo and behold, maybe that documentary helped. And just think, these tapes that came to surface, they are like DVR tapes. I mean, not DVR. They are like VCR tapes. They are old tapes. Like old tapes they don't even make anymore. Um. So, somebody... Somebody either, and, and like I said in my last life, y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I think somebody is either, somebody either tried to blackmail him and they realized they couldn't get no money out of him or he ignores him and called a bluff or it was somebody who, again, like it was their conscience was eating at them. And maybe he had done some more despicable things that they just can't, you know, tolerate. And maybe they stole the taste from him or took the taste from him or maybe had him all along and was like, okay, you know, uh, just in case something happened, I got some proof that he, yeah, they were old VHS, VHS tapes, like old tapes. And that's what he used, you know, back in the day, you know, before the DVDs and stuff came out. That's what he used, you know, to record most of his um, sexual encounters. And so that them tapes that just came to light, like who been holding on to these tapes? So y'all let me know. Do y'all think it was possibly blackmail? 
And they were like, okay, he called our bluff. Here you go, news. Here you go, cops. You know, here you go. Take that. ta -da out. Okay, you called my bluff. There you go. Or do y'all think maybe it's possibly somebody who, you know, may have knew where the taste was, were feeling guilty, maybe played a part or, you know, enabled him or something like that. And finally, after seeing the documentary, maybe the documentary hit them really deep. And maybe they was like, I just got to do this. I, got, I just... I just got to come forward and get these tapes up. So y'all let me know which one y'all think it was. But um, anyway, the lady who uh, um, got him out, her name is Valencia Love. She confirmed Tuesday that she's the woman, you know, who posted bail for R. Kelly. Um, and it plus on the bond slips, you know, it had her name on it too. But she said um, it was his own money. That's what his friend Valencia Love said. Said that was his, it was his own money. She said, I just posted the bill for him. Where does money come from? I mean, he ain't had no money just a few days ago. He can't pay child support. They say he's having trouble paying his rent. I mean, where does money come from? She claims it was his own money. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they maybe they pawned everything in the house, sold all his jewelry, pawned, you know, some cars, some, I don't know. <laughs> yep, they pulling stuff out the archives, honey. Yes, they are, Candace. They pulling stuff out the archives. Um, but yeah, he's still pleading not guilty um, to all the charges. And he put, you know, it was, since it was four different counts or four different indict indictments, he posted uh, four different amounts for bail, 25000 for each one, um, which was basically 10% of 250000 So each indictment uh, was 250000 which was a total of a million. So he posted 10% of each of the 250000 So it was four payments of $25,000 um, that his friend Valencia Love brought down there. But... Um, they, yeah, they picked him up. As soon as he got out of jail, they picked him up. He had an entourage. Did you see the uh, vehicle they picked him up? It had big old speakers inside the vehicle. Um, and then they, they said they drove almost immediately, immediately to a popular McDonald's. Again, I think that was done purposely to throw it in our face. Because of all the allegations that that's where he used to frequent. Um, he used to frequent the high schools, junior highs, you know, and also uh, the McDonald's where a lot of the young people hung out. So immediately after you got out of being locked up, you go to a very popular McDonald's where you know there are going to be a lot of people. A lot of people. Mm. You said nobody having stuff on their cells sitting within reach, huh? <laughs> Girl. And he said, and when you think about it, it's almost like, yeah, I'm going to get you back. Yeah, that's what it's like. It's like, I don't know. That was just, I don't know. I think that was just ironic that he chose McDonald's. I really do. But, uh... Yeah, that's where his entourage took him. They said he emerged in a tan hoodie coat, ordered fast food, and sat and enjoyed it right in the middle of the restaurant like any other customer. Like throwing it up in our face. Like throwing it up in our face. I guess. I guess. But, oh, yeah, and then um, his sister wives, you know, did you see them? Did you see the pictures of his sister wives? You know, they showed up in court, you know, to support him hand in hand, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, you know, came down to support him, uh, Jocelyn and Azriel, and they, wow, it's, brainwash isn't even the word, I, there is no words that I can think of to explain um, how what he does to these young girls and women, you know, they've been with him for a minute and 
in the in the jail. I mean, not at the jail, but in court. Uh, in court, Jasmine and uh, Ezreal. I mean, not Jasmine. How do you say her name? Joyce Joyce Land. That's it. Joyce Land. Joyce Land and Azriel. They had security around them. Bodyguards. Is that Husker? Is that my cousin? Hey, Husker chick. <laughs> How you doing? Thanks for checking in. But um, yeah, they had security guards around them so that their parents, you know, couldn't reach them, couldn't approach them. Like they are that brainwashed where at the court, their parents were not allowed to speak to them at all. At all. So, they allowing Kels, this is crazy for me, they allowing him to do all kind of messed up stuff to them and minors and making them also involve themselves in uh, situations with minors. And he ain't got no money? Like, how is he taking care of these women and these girls? How is he take? I don't. I don't get it. Where is the money coming from? Because if he don't, if he's really broke, like they say, and having trouble with his rent, ain't paid child support in years, couldn't get bailed out immediately. And oh my God, did y'all see him? Like, okay, I know he was in jail for a couple of days now. I know he was in jail for a couple of days, but. R. Kelly, he, I don't know. He don't, he, he don't look, I mean, okay, so his face, as far as facial features, you know, he still looks the same, but I mean, his body has totally changed. You can definitely tell that he's an older man. He's heavier. Um, he's 52 years old and he's no longer really entertaining us, no longer really making new music. Um, except for that one new song. What's that song that he was singing in Africa? Like, would you go back with the States with me? Or would you go back to America with me? Or, I don't know. I don't know if he was trying to solicitate people over there in Africa. Trying to get people to come over here. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, if he don't have any money and y'all still allow him to do all kind of messed up stuff to y'all... These women is really like, it, it ain't no help for them. It ain't no help for them. And they was walking hand in hand, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, in the courtroom as sister wives. <laughs> oh, I was like, wow, this is a mess. This is a mess. <laughs> that nigga, <laughs> you said he fat. See, I didn't even want to use the words. I didn't even want to use the words. <laughs> I'm like, I, 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 <laughs> he fluffy. <laughs> R. Kelly is fluffy. <laughs> but yeah, you said, you know, people got to stun a bit, man. <laughs> Girl, when I saw him with that big old hoodie sweater on and I was like, Kels. You look like you've been eating good. I mean, hey, I mean, I, I ain't gonna call nobody fat because I'm a, I'm a plus size girl, you know. I'm, miss, call me Miss Fluffy if you want, you know. But, uh, that's why I said I ain't gonna call him fat. I ain't gonna call him fat. But I was just kind of surprised because he always, like, always has been in great shape. Hey, one queen, seven kings, how you doing? Thanks for checking in. I'm on YouTube and Instagram right now, so I'm reading comments off of two different screens right now. I'm keeping up so far. <laughs> but thanks for checking in on YouTube with me. Um, and also, y'all who don't know my Instagram is Tanya's Primetime TV on uh, Instagram. But, yeah, I was just like, all these accusations and people thinking, okay, He's still getting off. A lot of people think he's still getting off, even though there was semen caught on, there was semen found on these young girls' shirts. Um, there's tapes. There's actual tapes of the encounters. And I, I don't know. I don't think, oh, you said, you said I'm fat. I'm just calling it a spade, a spade. 
<laughs> Candace, <laughs> I feel you. You said you fat. I'm just calling a spade a spade. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> but he do look low-key messed up. I agree. He did look low-key messed up. Like, like, he been going through some stuff. Like, okay. Maybe it was the documentary that hit him. You know, maybe I know when that came out, you know, he was trying to he was trying to stop Lifetime for showing it. He threatened to sue him. But you know what? Lifetime, those big old uh TV networks, pff, they like whatever. Come with it. <laughs> Come with it. He couldn't afford to sue them. He can't even afford to pay child support. Boy, bye. <laughs> bye. Lifetime was going to show that movie, shoot, and if they won't, they're going to make three, four different versions of it, shoot, and make remixes out of them and everything. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, <laughs> the attorneys for for two of the women, um, you know, for two of his accusers, you know that dude, uh, Michael Avenatti, um, he's representing, you know, two of the accusers, and he said, you know, his legal team had gave prosecutors a second video on Monday that showed Kells, you know, sexually abusing a minor. Uh, and they he previously gave him, you know, a different videotape with evidence that showed Kelly having sex with an underage girl. Um, the second video involves a 14-year-old girl. He said the footage is from 1999 or 2000 it's about 55 minutes 55 minutes long with a 14 year old girl now they did not say if the same 14 year old girl seen in the first video um if it was the same girl from the second video but but they said the conduct in the tape can be described as nothing short of outrageous totally illegal totally illegal so they have no questions about his guilt as far as um attorney michael avenatti but <laughs> there's also a third tape but he didn't give details on that third tape but um kale's attorney I'm telling y'all, this is gonna be this is gonna be the trial of the decade. This is gonna be the trial of the decade, and I'm gonna be here for it, and we're gonna talk about it and all that stuff till till it's over. Till it's over. Like I said, this is gonna be the trial of the decade. Not just because it's Kells, not just because some people thought he would never ever face court again for allegations like these, but if he wins. It's going down in history twice, two times, two times. If he win twice, going down for allegations like this twice on videotapes, proof like that. And if he went, if he loses, it's also going down in history because it's like people have been waiting. Some people five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, twenty five years. To see Kells prosecuted. So either way. Either way. It's going down in history. Either way. I just hope when he gets prosecuted. I mean when he gets uh, found guilty. That he actually serves time. Um, again with 10 counts. A maximum of 7 years for each count. Um, a maximum of 70 years. Is still a possibility. I mean the most lenient um, sentence that the judge could give. Is probation. But, again, if he's really on tape, and we'll probably never get to see these tapes. Like, remember the bootleg tape back in the day in 08? When that tape came out and it was all around the projects, people were selling it out they, uh trunk and at the corners, at the gas stations, and the jitney stands, and the... <laughs> I'm in the bookie joints and stuff. I don't think I don't think we gonna get hold to these tapes. I I don't think so. But um, if it's really him and these girls are fourteen to sixteen years old, um, I can't imagine him just getting probation. I just can't imagine that. So again, y'all let me know what y'all think about 
these, I mean, more and more details is coming out with each allegation, each indictment, you know, um, giving us more detailed information. You said 25 years. Yeah, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, 25 years. Yep, because um, Aaliyah, you you remember Aaliyah was like, Aaliyah was probably the first one that we know of. And I didn't say it before. I think there were some before Aaliyah. I didn't say it before. I think there were some before Aaliyah. Then there was Aaliyah, and then there was some after, and allegedly he threw in a cousin too, you know. I guess he was like, gotta keep it in the family. Gotta keep some of this in the family. But, um, I don't know. That's just disgusting. That's just really, really disgusting. Ugh. But anyway, yeah, his attorney is like, you know what? Um, uh, what did his attorney say? Uh, at a news conference, he said that Kells has done nothing wrong and said no one has shown him any kind of evidence. <laughs> I'm like, what you mean? Nobody showed you any kind of evidence. I, I don't know. And he said everybody is entitled to their, uh, you know, a two defense. Of course, everybody is, you know, entitled to the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. So we shall see what happens. We shall see what happens, and we we'll see how this all play out. Y'all know, uh, I'm 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 gonna be I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Because I am looking forward to him. Um, so, okay, I wouldn't say taking responsibility, but I guess being forced to take responsibility, you know, for his actions and a lot of these, you know, un ugh, just nasty. Just nasty. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Just mm, horrible. But anyway, yeah. So, y'all let me know what y'all think about these allegations um, about the Pied Piper. Put it all in the comments. Those of y'all on YouTube, um, put, you can put it in the comments section, you know, after the video is done um, streaming live. You can put it in the comments. And y'all on YouTube and Instagram, please remember, please remember, I have uh, the Tanya's Live, pri the Tanya's Live Prime Time. TV media reviews channel which I'm on now and of course on Instagram you know y'all on my Tanya's primetime TV Instagram channel or you know but as far as YouTube it's Tanya's live primetime TV media news and it's also just Tanya's primetime so it's Tanya's live primetime and it's Tanya's primetime two different channels um, sometimes I upload different stuff to different channels and also, don't forget about my cake decorating uh, YouTube channel, Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice, which is also on YouTube, um, uh, Twitter, and uh, Instagram, and also Facebook. Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice. Check out a lot of my desserts. I'm a personal uh, custom cake decorator. Um, you know, generally, what I usually do is just, you know, make cakes and desserts for my family and friends. And... I enjoy doing it. Been doing it for a while. It's, you know, my little hobby, something that I like to do. Uh, well, I should say love to do. <laughs> but, uh, anywho, yeah, check me out over there. And, you know, if you want, you can follow me on that channel. Subscribe to that channel. But anyway, so I got three channels. Tanya's Live, Primetime TV, Media News. Um, Media News and Reviews. And Tanya's Primetime TV, Media Reviews. And Tanya's delights slice by slice so please y'all make sure y'all support all those channels for me and uh share share the live share my share my channels um share my facebook page my tanya's delight slice by slice facebook page um please thank you very kindly <laughs> but in the meantime and in between time y'all prime time squad i'm about to get out of here thanks everybody for tuning in on youtube thanks to everybody who tuned in on instagram i really appreciate you guys so 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 much and i hope you all have a blessed evening and a safe evening and in the meantime and in between time i'm out deuces good night